My guest tonight is a two-term governor, a Golden Globe-winning actor, a five-time Mr. Universe, and a seven-time Mr. Olympia. Now he's written a book of advice called Be Useful, Seven Tools for Life. Please welcome to The Late Show, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, well, this guy looks so pumped up up there. Look at yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, uh, welcome to the show. It's really lovely to have you here. I've wanted to talk to you for a long time. I'm, I'm glad we could finally make it happen. Thank you, and congratulations to your 30th anniversary. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. See you yeah, at backstage. Yes. It's very nice. Well. Yes, I met your lovely wife, and she definitely is the better half. <laughs> I don't fight. I will not fight you on that one. Um, <laughs> you, you're 76 years old. You, you, you've had three epic Why careers. Why do you have to mention that? What? <laughs> Why do you have to mention it's, that? It's just even more impressive how good you look. You okay, see? No, thank you, thank I'm you. Setting Go ahead. You up. <laughs> I'm setting you up for the compliment. <laughs> one of the things I've always, one skill that's always impressed me about whether it's in your bodybuilding career, your acting career, your political career, is how. Um, absolutely powerfully you sell whatever you're doing. And, and I want to I wanna do some of that selling tonight for your new book, which is called Be Useful, Seven Tools for Life. It's available tomorrow. Um, but, but before we go to any of that, I just want to know about, like, did you have any plans other than bodybuilding? Like, if it hadn't been bodybuilding, was there a fallback position for you? No, I, as a matter of fact, I write about that in the book that there never was a fallback position or a plan B. Because I always felt kind of like if enough people out there doubting you, enough people talking about, you know, maybe this doesn't work and I think this is the wrong thing to do, and especially in bodybuilding, people said, you know, why don't you become a world champion in skiing? That's Austrian, but bodybuilding is an American sport. It would never happen. No, there's no, no way. So you already have all these people saying no, no, no. So if I say I have to have a plan B, that means that I have doubts myself oh. that it's not going to work and is this going to work or not, and I have a fallback position. So I didn't want to doubt myself because that's the worst thing that can, you can do, right. is doubt yourself. So you have to have confidence. You have to have a very clear vision where you go. I had a very clear vision that I want to be the world's best bodybuilder, the most muscular man, winning the Mr. Universe contest uh, in London at the same stage where Reg Park and Steve Reeves won. This is where the guys that played Hercules in the movies sure, sure. that I saw as a kid. And that's what inspired me. So I wanted to do exactly the same thing, train as hard five hours a day and get there. And, you know, it became a reality. With the age of 20, I became the youngest Mr. Universe ever in London at the very same stage. Well, uh, talking about bulking up, I want to be one to give you something to make you feel comfortable here. So we brought a, a little Austrian treat here that we heard you liked. What is, uh, this is, Where did uh, you get that? Uh, <laughs> that is in, amazing in, because this in, is Kaiserschmarrn. That, this is Kaiserschmarrn. Kaiserschmarrn. I, I didn't know how to pronounce it. Kaiserschmarrn. Yeah, Kaiserschmarrn. yeah exactly, with the, with the powdered sugar on top. Which, like, which, and like, it's like unbelievable. So what is, what is Kaiserschmarrn? Let me see. What does Kaiserschmarrn, Kaiserschmarrn mean? Kaiserschmarrn translated means emperor's fluff. So it's kind of like pancake cut up uh, into little pieces. But it's something that the Germans developed, the, 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 the emperor, and, and said that we, every German should have, uh, you know, at least uh, one dish of Kaiserschmarrn a day, which is made out of eggs and flowers. It's one of those crazy German things, you know, where everyone has to have the same. And mm. uh, but let's just try it. Mm. That is... It should like, be warm. It should be warm. <laughs> yeah, it should be warm. It should be warm. Yeah, it should definitely be warm. I'm glad. No, but this is really yeah. nice. It's just a little, mm. it's a little congealed Kaiserschmarrn is what it's it is. Fantastic. This, it really this tastes good. This is like good. kind of like the food you where get on the runway. Where do you, you get this? Here at the Late Show Labs, we always have. There's no one that knows how to make Kaiserschmarrn. Yeah. I don't know anybody. I remember my mother used to come over and she would stay with me. Um, this was back in the 70s. And she would teach everyone how to make Kaiserschmarrn and how to make Wiener Schnitzel. It was very funny because she just always felt like the Americans didn't know how to cook. 
and all of that stuff. And I said, no, no, the Americans cook really well. They just don't know how to make Kaiserschmarrn or Wiener Schnitzel right. or, or Leberknödel. Oh, you don't get Spätzle over here. No Spätzle over here. Now, for no. that, you have to go to the Oktoberfest over to Munich or go to Austria. And I've never been. Is that, is that really fun? Or is, it, or is it just uh, a mob? No, no. Oktoberfest, well, it has a, hundreds of thousands of people descend in, uh, on the Munich. I just came, actually, from there two weeks ago. I was at the Oktoberfest. And in my house, I had a uh, Oktoberfest also. On here Saturday, in the yeah, here in Los Angeles, in Los Angeles, uh, we have uh, we had the Oktoberfest, which was a fundraiser to raise money for the kids for after-school programs. Mm -hmm. We raised seven million dollars on this Oktoberfest. Yeah. That's lovely. Thank you. But the kids, the kids didn't get any of the beer. I'm hoping the kids did not get it. No, the kids were not even there. They, uh, it was too late at night. But I mean, we, we have those programs all over the United States, and we catered to around 150,000 kids. And uh, because, you know, 70% um, of the kids come from homes where both of the parents are working. So the parents don't have time in the afternoon to take care of their kids until they get home at night. So between 3 and 6 o'clock is the danger zone for kids which means that's when they get involved in juvenile crime, teenage pregnancy, uh, gangs, drugs, violence, and all of this stuff, which costs society a huge amount of money, the incarceration and all this stuff. So what I felt 30 years ago when I started this program was that we can do better than that in America. We can go and provide programs after the school is over to have the kids stay in school, do homework assistance, tutoring, sports and fitness programs, arts and stuff like that until 6 o'clock, until the parents can pick up the kids. So now those kids are safe and getting education. That's lovely. Yeah. That's lovely. We have to take a quick break, but stick around. We'll be right back with more Arnold Schwarzenegger, everybody.